man, look at this. It looks like uh, somebody got into a little bit of an accident here. So we got a, uh, what is that, a Honda Accord and this Nissan thing, I forget. But uh, I don't know what's going on with this freaking traffic. This shit is ridiculous. I have no idea. It, it says that there's something wrong there and I'm almost to it, but it says there's like an accident somewhere. I don't know how these people screwed us up. But then again, I mean, it did rain heavily, but there's no rain right now. It's like, you think you people know how to drive a little bit better. Oh, well. Sucks. Here's another... Volvo XC40 Recharge. Um, you know, you don't see a whole lot of those. Most people ain't buying Volvo. You know, they, they had a big thing with the XC90, but uh, that seems to have cooled off. I'm trying to figure out what the hell... Like, who got into the accident? I don't see nobody. Uh, it's just a little bit further up, but it's... It's basically created about 20 to 25 minutes worth of wasted time. Oh my God. So then, uh, what is it? Today is uh, Thursday. I'm down to 128 miles, which is fine. I'll go to the charger probably tomorrow. I don't think it'll still be... Uh, it, yeah, it's definitely... I'll, I'll go tomorrow. Uh, I'll go tomorrow. Yeah, because uh, it'll be dark by the time I'm finished in the city. So, um, I'll go to the charger tomorrow. I'm really, really, really happy to know that that EVgo charger is opening up in Westbury because I definitely know I will make use of that one. You know, every now and then I may visit the Massapequa one, but I probably won't go there as frequently. So I'm really glad. You know, and that's all that really needed to be done. All they need to do is open more chargers. That's, that's really all it comes down to. It's like you, you think they, they waste billions of dollars building fighter jets and fucking bombers that we'll never use. They waste all that fucking money giving it to Lockheed Martin. It's like, I have an idea. How about you use a fraction of that money and build more public chargers? You know, do something for the American public good, you know? Like, all of these uh, car companies have been releasing their um, data about how many electric cars they've sold versus how many ICE cars they've sold. And basically, it seems to be about similar with all of them. It's like uh, they're selling about 10% of their sales are electric cars. So if, if you figure, like, let's say one out of 10 for certain companies, one out of 10, sometimes it was two out of 10. That's actually really not bad for market penetration. Because the reality is, over the next 30 years, that number is going to keep on growing and growing and growing. You know, it's funny, I'm, I'm listening to these morons on YouTube. Oh yeah, they're going to have SRT Hydra, and they're going to have hydrogen-powered Hemis. I'm like, you guys are stupid. I understand you got to make uh, videos in order to get views, but that shit is just dumb. First of all, Stellantis just fired most of their North American workforce. Trust me, they ain't working on no fucking Hemis. They ain't working on no V8s either. Stellantis plans to uh, build a bunch of battery electric vehicles. That's what they're planning. Dodge doesn't make right-hand drive vehicles. They can't sell that stuff in Europe. Europeans hate American cars. Stellantis is going to be the death of that portion of the company. They'll probably spin them all. I, I'm pretty sure Stellantis is going to kill Chrysler and it's going to kill Dodge. Jeep and Ram, I think maybe they'll keep those around for a while. Especially Jeep. And Ram specifically because, you know, they make, you know, light trucks. So I think they'll keep them around. But Chrysler and Dodge are dead. I feel bad for the people who didn't understand it and they're just realizing it because I understood it a long time ago. I was like, yeah, this shit is done. Man, this freaking traffic. This sucks.
Next time I see somebody with a Tesla, I want to ask them if they've been using their full self-driving. Because uh, right now, Tesla stock is like in the toilet. It's taking some hurt. And uh, I'm not worried about it simply because of the fact that I do know that over time, Tesla's going to, uh, you know, they'll rebound. They've, they've seen this before. We've seen the dips with Tesla. If you've been a Tesla shareholder as long as I have, you've been on a roller coaster the entire time. So I'm not really worried about it. But uh, anytime their stock dips, that's when Elon comes out with some crazy shit. Like, but sometimes it's uh, price cuts. In this case, he, he supposedly, he released uh, full self-driving to everybody. And he's letting them use it or test it out or whatever. I don't know how long that's going to last. But the thing about it is you always knew that there was no way in hell people were going to pay $12,000 for the car to drive itself. Not unless they, you know, they just threw it in as an option and they just didn't care. But um, that's the thing about over-the-air updates. They can update the car and uh, they can give you features that are already in the car anytime they feel like it, whether you've paid for them or not, especially if it's a promo. It's just like with Sirius XM. They've always done that. You know, they give you a certain amount of time to use it. They try to get you hooked on it. And then they uh, snatch it away, and they say, "Yeah, you gotta pay us nine dollars a month." It's like I'm I'm not willing to pay for anything extra at this point. I'm just not willing. It's like that. That's what all of these companies are trying to do. They try to get you into memberships and try to get you to pay them a little bit of this per month, a little bit of that per month. I'm not down with that. You know, I don't like I don't like having to do the monthly payment shit. I still haven't seen an accident, and by now I should be seeing something. I haven't seen anything. It better be a damn good accident. It better be spectacular, because there's no reason I had to wait 25 fucking minutes. This this better be good. You see this right here? This is ambulance Keisha. This is Keisha EMT. Like, Keisha's doing everything nowadays. Keisha's driving trucks. Keisha's flying planes. Keisha's got the, uh, what is this, emergency service vehicle. And she's doing her thing. I've seen Keisha driving these big, big rigs, the big trucks. Yeah, you gotta watch out for Keisha. She's uh, she's getting these, uh, she's getting that bag. You know, it's so funny. My um, first boss for my first job, her name was Keisha too. I swear to God, she was actually planning to have the place robbed by some of her boys from the hood. That's no joke. She was literally planning to... She was plotting and planning to have the place robbed. Like, you can't make this stuff up. And I didn't find out about it until, like, much later. Now, the place that I worked at had gotten robbed a couple of times. Now, I'm not sure if that was her or if it was connected. But uh, you got to watch out for Keisha. Uh, getting in the morning. Started off Friday morning. Friday morning. <coughs> <coughs> Friday morning. Not much to talk about. We got the solar eclipse coming up Monday. That should be interesting. I wonder how many of these people are going to go blind staring at that shit directly with their eyes. <laughs> you can't tell these people nothing. It's like, oh, really? I want to look at it. That should be fun. Oh, shit, this guy's slowing down fast. Now, this guy is, he has a police, it says police, but this guy's not a state trooper, and he's not Nassau County, so I'm trying to figure out what kind of police he is. I think that might be a New York Parks uh, police, because it's like, it has a green fucking badge, it's like not blue. Anyway, just to make sure I don't run into this asshole, let me just uh, hit the uh, auto drive. You know, so this way I keep a specific distance away from him. I don't want to end up in the back of his seat. Yeah, so boring week, nothing major. You know, car show is pretty much over. It, it really ends on uh, what is it called? Uh, April seventh. But for the most part, that shit was dull. <laughs> you know, 
I heard some of these YouTubers talking about the police are going to be disappointed because they're going to uh, have to go to another company to make police cars since these Dodge Chargers are on their way out. But uh, for the most part, I don't see that being a problem because even here, like, the cops use um, Ford Explorers as uh, police cruisers now. And um, the thing about it is, as sophisticated as the technology is, they really don't need to get engaged in high-speed police chases. You know, like, one of the benefits of the Dodge Chargers, because that thing was so heavy, they could hit you and pit maneuver your ass and flip your car upside down when you're driving really, really fast. But uh, you don't really need to do all that. It's like you could just show up at the person's house and uh, kick in the door, wave in the 4-4, and um, that's it. You know, you don't even have to really chase these people no more. You don't like the technology is so that, you know, they, they got you digitally. Now, granted, they want to catch you in the act like they want to have, uh, you know, whatever. If you've got drugs in the car, they want to get the drugs. If you have uh, guns in the car, they want to get the guns. I understand they want to catch you in the act. But the thing about it is you can just as easily catch these fuckers at their house. Or I should say at their apartment because most of these people can't afford shit. So, you know wherever their domicile might be. So I don't foresee, you know, it being a big problem because, like, some of these some of these people are short-sighted, these YouTubers especially. Like, they're like, oh, yeah, well, the cops will never be able to get over this. I'm like, uh, yeah, they will. This guy's got a sheriff at New York State Park Police. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's the New York State Parks Police. That's why it's green. But then again, all the cops, they're going, like, electric, and they've got green... Uh, stuff so you know it's like inside the city you're starting to see Mustang mach es being used as police cars eventually it'll probably be Chevy Blazers because the reality is most of these departments they ain't trying to spend all that money in gas these cops be sitting still burning all that fuel they ain't trying to see that Parks police. What are you pulling guns on trees? Fucking shooting squirrels? Like I don't I don't understand. What are you doing? <laughs> He's beating up on the deer. Oh. You really don't see many uh Chrysler three hundreds, especially you know, after uh FCA botched that car and they never gave us that uh Chrysler three hundred Hellcat. So yeah, it's a nice uh, morning. It's Saturday, nice morning. And of course, I had to pull out the Jeep because um, got to recharge the battery, got to get the dust off the rotors and whatnot. In fact, by the end of this month, I have to get the inspection sticker done on this car. So I have to take this car. I usually get my inspections done at like Pep Boys or uh, what is it called? Um, um, Mavis, so usually I'll use like either Pave, uh, what is it, Pep Boys, Mavis, or that other one, uh, Jiffy Lube, because Jiffy Lube does inspection stickers, so I usually go to one of them, but, uh, yeah, everything's good, as you can see, there's no codes, there's no, uh, check engine light, there's no, um, battery light, if you try to drive one of these cars and you've been letting it sit, uh, the battery light usually will come on, and if you have the battery light come on, that usually means that the voltage is below 14 volts, and if the voltage goes below 14 volts, typically that will, um, in some cases, affect your power steering, and it may affect um, your lighting, but typically it'll go after your power steering first. I've noticed that if the voltage drops to 12 volts, yeah, your power steering it, it just goes away. That's That's how you know if you have, like, a problem with your alternator recharging the battery, you know. So, um, you know, I'm trying to make sure that I get this car out at least, um, once every two weeks, at least, you know? So, uh, yeah, it's other than that, everything's fine with it. As I said, I'm probably going to get new wheels, new tires for this car. Uh, I'll be watching eBay to see when, uh, the price on new wheels and new tires drops. Cause usually some people sell the wheels and the tires, uh, like as soon as they get a car they'll just sell the wheels and the tires and usually you see them on ebay all the time what they usually don't include is the tire pressure monitoring but i have my own tire pressure monitoring sensors so you know whoever uh swaps the tires they can do it themselves and 
basically you're looking at like between two and three thousand dollars you know for the wheels tires and the uh the tpms swaps and all that yeah i've got a jeep 4 by e right behind me and apparently he's not interested in passing me i'm just driving at a nice steady 60 using adaptive cruise control apparently that jeep 4 by e is not in he doesn't really care to pass me, so he could stay back there. I could kill us. But I was just wondering about that. So, um, as far as, uh, you know, my electric vehicle, I love my electric vehicle. I, in fact, I would have driven, if I didn't have to recharge this car, I would have driven my electric vehicle instead. But um, the thing about it is, um, you know, when you're watching these companies having trouble, I think the important thing to remember, and I really haven't heard anybody really say this, the important thing to remember if you're talking about why EV sales are going down right now, well, first of all, we're in a recession. Some economists who are honest would actually say that this is a stagflationary environment, which is worse than a recession, but technically we could just say we're in a recession. The government lies to you by using all types of numbers and shit that are bullshit, like the CPI, and they, they try to pretend that we're not in a recession because they don't want you thinking we're in a recession. If you think we're in a recession, then you stop spending money. They want you to think everything's hunky-dory. They want you to think, yeah, you could just go out and spend whatever you want, but that's not the reality. The reality is this is the time when you should be saving money. But the, of course, they're not gonna let that message get out. So the reality is we're really in a stagflationary environment. They keep going on and on about, oh yes, well, unemployment is 3.8%. It's like the lowest it's ever been. Well, yeah, okay, unemployment's low, but you can't afford shit. You can't afford a house. You see these houses over there? You can't afford none of that shit. Those how every fucking house that I'm looking at right now, every single one costs at least a half a million dollars. Can you get a loan for a half a million dollars at an 8%? Even if you have excellent credit, you're looking at an 8% interest rate. Can you? The answer is probably not. Now, I'm not going to say that about everybody. Some of you have parents who die and leave you money. Some of you hit the lotto. Very few of you. Uh, some of you have really great jobs. Very few of you. So I'm not going to say everybody can't afford it. What I will say is most people can't afford that. So what's the point in having high employment if you can't afford shit? You see that piece of shit uh, Toyota Camry right there? Or you see this Honda Sonata right here? Those cars, if you try to buy one of these cars now, you're looking at interest rates that are making the price of these cars twice what they normally would be. Now look at this guy. This guy's got the Jeep, but he's got the old Jeep. And then it's like an Overland Summit or something. So when he passes by me, it doesn't matter how many of them extra lights you add on. You don't have one that says SRT. Not only does my Jeep say SRT on it, my Jeep also has the license plate holder that says SRT on it. So you stay behind me because you're an inferior model. So as I was saying, um, you can't afford houses, you can't afford cars right now. Some of you are having trouble affording basics like food and gas. And considering when I go into Walmart and the, the soap, the liquid soap, just to wash your clothes is encased in bulletproof glass like it's an xbox or a playstation 4 think about that you go into the store you go into walmart you go into target they have to lock up the goddamn soap they have to lock up the the deodorant so that tells me that a lot of y'all can't even afford basic necessities y'all can't even afford to smell nice so if y'all can't look at this lady look at this lady look at this lady that she that must be her son's jeep but anyway, yeah, y'all can't even afford to smell nice because everything's so expensive. So you got gas prices are high. You got soap, liquid soap. is like, what, $19.99 for a couple of gallons. Look at this lady. Grandma. Grandma tried to sneak up on me. And then she got another white Jeep right there in front of her. They sold so many. Look at these Jeeps. They sold so many of these goddamn things. They're like roaches. They, they were selling like 400,000 of these cars every single year, new and used between the Jeeps and uh, Durango's. They sold so many, look at this lady. These women, they wanna feel strong and powerful and they wanna feel big and empowered. So what they do is they get a big truck, like that Toyota. They get a big Toyota Sequoia so they can feel big and strong and powerful like they're men. 
See, I, I don't have that phase, so I can get a small car and be happy with it, or I can get an electric vehicle, I can be happy with it. But these women, they need to feel big and strong and powerful because they're competing with us. But bottom line is, if they have to lock up the liquid soap, that just tells you that we are in a really bad situation where people, so many shoplifted. Because first of all, I'll tell you like this, anybody who's shoplifting and stealing uh, deodorant and soap, they're not in the housing market. Chances are they're Section 8, renting with government money, Section 8. And um, chances are they're probably selling drugs. And the reality is they're not in the housing market. They never will be. And they're screaming to Joe Biden to make houses more affordable. But there's nothing he could do about it. So what did Joe Biden do? Joe Biden said, oh, well, maybe if we offer people $10,000 to sell their house, maybe that's enough of incentive. I guarantee you that there's probably zero people who've taken that $10,000 offer to sell their freaking house. I, I may, I've, I've shown you on my community chat, I get these offers all the time. Oh, are you selling? You interested in selling? Oh, we'll buy houses. Uh, we, we won't even look at them. Spot, we'll buy them. Yo, it's like, I'm not selling shit. Look at this. this Jeeps are like roaches. Go ahead. You want to get in front of me? Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't even care. I'm doing 60 miles an hour. So anyway, um, yeah, it's like nobody's taking that stupid ass offer. Why the fuck would I take $10,000 from you to sell a house when my house is a more as it's, it's a more of an appreciating asset than anything else I possibly own? Why the hell would I do that? That's stupid. But that that's what the government does. They gamble with your money and you're too stupid to stop them from doing it. You know, it's funny. I was I was listening to uh, Peter Schiff. And he was talking about, you know, the government trying to step in to fix that bridge that collapsed because of the boat hitting it. And he was like, oh, well, with what money? What money? Well, I'll tell you what money we should be using. We should be using the money that we're not sending to Israel and the money we're not sending to Ukraine. And then we'd be able to fix all the bridges. We'd be able to fix this piece of shit right here. Look at this bridge. Look, you see that paint? That could be repainted. But you're not going to have the money if you're sending it over there to Ukraine and Israel. And, with, and you think about it, with all the money that we've sent over there, what difference has it made? What difference has it made? The answer is none. So we should stop sending it, and uh, we should fix America, you know? America first. You see that fence right there? That fence looks terrible. That should be fixed. I don't think it'll cost a billion dollars to fix a fence. I think it costs a couple of hundred thousand, maybe, but no. That fence, look at that fence. That fence looks like shit. Look at that fence. And you're spending money over there? So that's why I, you know what? I appreciate Donald Trump. When Donald Trump was telling NATO allies, he's like, listen, if you don't pay us back, we're not going to give you any more money. I appreciate it. Look at this guy. He's got a lyric. He's got 22s. He's got the green lyric with 22s. Very nice. So uh, when Donald Trump's telling these people, he's like, yes, if you don't give us our money and you don't pay your fair share, we're not giving you any money. So they went, and you probably don't even know about it because they did it very quietly. They went and they put like a whole act through Congress that makes it so the presidency can't unilaterally withdraw from NATO. Now, keep in mind, the whole point of NATO is to stop Soviet expansion. Soviet Union don't exist no more. In fact, if you take anything Putin had to say seriously, he claimed that he wanted to join NATO when Bill Clinton was in presidency. And uh, Bill Clinton said, yeah, yeah, that sounds like a great idea, man. Let me go talk to Monica about it. So he went and talked to Monica about it. Then he came back. He's like, nah, I'm afraid that's not going to happen. He was a lot calmer after he talked to Monica. I don't know why he was so much calmer, but he was a lot calmer when he talked to Monica about it. But um, if Russia were to join NATO, there'd be no reason for NATO to exist. There's no reason for it to exist now. So... The military-industrial complex, Boeing, Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, Grumman, Northrop Grumman, they need it to exist. Why? Because without us blowing money on F-22s and F-35s, which we will never use, they would end up just like Fisker. They would go out of business just like freaking Fisker. Just like Fisker. And uh, they're terrified of that. So what do they do? They start passing laws and shit to make it so that you can't stop the military-industrial complex. We were warned. We were warned. We were warned about the military industrial complex and we didn't take the warning seriously. And now look where you are. I am on my way. I'm gonna go to the uh, gas station. I'm gonna put some gas in this thing because as you can see, the uh, gas light decided to come on. 
I haven't bought gas in so long. I don't even know how much gas is, but I'm pretty sure it's probably high because I've seen the uh, oil stocks that I still hold going up. So I could imagine that if the oil stocks are going up, then gas prices must be, they must be high. I'm guessing it's like $4 or something. So I really don't know, but I'm about to find out. So I'm going to go buy um, BJ's and get it from there because, um, you know, I'll get it at the lowest price. But for the most part, even low prices are still freaking high. It's like still close or past $4 a gallon. You know? It feels so good to have an electric vehicle. It really does. Like I'm driving this car right here. It's like this car feels like so old. <laughs> I mean, it's fun. That it's still OK to drive. It, it just feels old. And, and to think they're not making any of these anymore. No more SRT. No more V8. No more Hemi. Naturally aspirated V8. No more. No mas. You know, it's amazing. I was looking at that uh, Chevy Silverado. I wonder if Escalade, the IQ models, I wonder if they'll have a uh, Escalade IQ EXT because I would love that. I'd love to buy that. That would be awesome. It's not not that I really want to drive a truck every day, but uh, you know, I would do it for that car. I'd do it. And then the funny thing is, it's like I didn't even really drive that many miles, and this thing just sucked all that goddamn gas down. Like I, I've really forgotten how much gas. Like I used, I really, I've really forgotten about that. It's like this thing, this thing is a gas guzzler, and it just never lets up. That's the reason why these, these EVs are making the EV sales. All right, let's go. So let's go in there and find out how much they want for a gallon of gas. Let's go find out. It says three dollars and seven cents for regular. So, uh oh, look at this guy's got the Trail Blazer. What is that? The Chevy Snail Blazer, and it has the SS on the side, so that stands for Super Slow. They made two models. They made Super Slow, and they made Super Snail. So it's the Snail Blazer Super Snail. Super Snail, Super Slow. Oh my god, how long do I gotta wait on this goddamn one? So I usually just drop in about $20 or something, just basically to keep some gas in this thing, just in case I ever needed to use it. Yeah, see, I can see this, this is a long ass gas line. This is a long ass line. Look at this. These people all waiting on line, not me. It's like, oh yeah, I can get gas in three minutes. It's like, oh really? No, I think this is gonna take me longer than three minutes. It's uh two o'clock right now, 159. But it's basically two o'clock. Look at this shit. Look at this. And the sad thing is, and it, see this is the one thing I noticed. Ever since Biden was president, everybody comes to Costco or BJ's to get their gas now simply because gas is so expensive. So whatever little bit of money you can save, they're trying to save by coming here. This sucks. Fucking gas lines. It's 2 o'clock. Look at this. 2 o'clock. And I gotta wait on this fucking line for like 30 minutes or something. Oh yeah, I could get gas in 3 minutes. It's like, yeah, okay. If you say so. This sucks. This this is the uh, Hemi 5.7. I would say if I had to drive a truck to tow shit, I'd probably have a 5.7 or I'd have a 6.4. I probably wouldn't even need the 6.4 because if I really, really, really had to tow stuff, I'd have a diesel, you know? But the problem is now, because of these interest rates and because of these markups that these these uh, um, these uh, dealerships, these dealerships, because of the markups, it's like you, you got to pay damn near twice as much per month for one of these damn things. So I, I'm so thankful that this car right here, this car is paid. This car is paid off. Right? No more 
car note on this car. This car is paid. Look at this lady. She got the BMW. She got the old BMW 7. It's like, listen, lady, it's time for you to get the new one. It's time for you to get the i7. And see, that's another... I'm looking at the way that... You see how these BMWs are? How you see the front door is not as long as the rear door? That's one thing I hate about BMW. If they were like Mercedes, and they made that front and that back door the same length, then they'd have something, you know? They've, they've made it so that the driver's space is not as spacious as the passenger space in the back. And I never, ever liked that. That's why I could never buy one of their cars. I don't like the way they design their cars. That BMW i7 is a huge car, but the problem is they, they make it so that the passenger seat is so close to the front that if you're like a really big, tall person, it's like you're not, you know, you're not going to be comfortable in that shit. Mercedes, they make it so like I could swim in that car. They got so much space. So it's like I would rather have an S-Class and a fucking a 7 Series. They keep that shit. Oh, man, I got to find out. What, what is it with these people? Come on, let's go. What, what's going on here? Freaking Honda Accord. What are you doing? Let's go. I don't know, I guess. It's, let's see. It's probably like $4 a gallon. So, let's go. With this. Oh, this is a woman. The Durango. GT Durangos. Somebody just bought a mattress, I see. So now here comes the big reveal. Now we get to find out how much this gas costs per gallon. Three dollars and seventy-three cents. Okay, well, it's not exactly four dollars, but you know, it's still up there. As far as I'm concerned, premium should be like no more than three. For no reason, this should, there's no reason this shit should be over three dollars. There's no reason. Three dollars and five cents for regular. $3.73 for premium. So if you have a car that uses middle grade, yeah, you pretty much have to just go straight to premium. All right, so this guy is finished. It looked like he was using premium. Like, I didn't know you had to put premium in this uh, Ford Expedition, but then again... Because, you know, and I was just having this conversation with one of my uncles who has a 2010 Navigator. They used to have naturally aspirated V8 engines in these trucks, Ford, Lincoln, Mercury, right? But now it's all this fucking twin turbo EcoBoost bullshit. So you got to have premium fuel. I would rather have a naturally aspirated V8 just like this one, but that has the ability to use regular unleaded as the norm. You know, see, with a Hemi, you can't do that shit. If you put regular unleaded in this motherfucker, it'll start knocking. You know, the the anti-knock compensator might be able to compensate for it, but you run the risk of damaging the engine. I can't, I can't, I can't abide by that. You know, I can't abide by that. It looks too bad. <sighs> Let's get this thing right, pumped. So up. gas is $3.73 right now for premium. So uh, my guess is by summer... It's going to be a little bit higher. See this lady? She got one of those Alfa Romeos. You don't see those too much. You know, I've seen a couple of Dodge Hornets around, but not very many. 
I've heard Dodge can barely sell those things because they want like damn near fifty thousand dollars for them fucking things. You know, it's so stupid. It's like I don't know what, what they what are they doing to this uh, car market. It's like they just they it's like a mess. You know, I'm just gonna throw in about thirty bucks. And that should be more than enough because I I only drive this car like maybe once a week or something. Let's see, twenty eight. Let's see, twenty nine. Oh, there you go. Thirty. All right. Let's just get it. Right. No, I could put in ten gallons. What? No, no. In fact, wait. What am I saying? Yeah, well, it doesn't really matter. I just need just enough to be able to start the car and yeah, because I'm not putting in a lot of I'm not putting in a lot, but. There we go, thirty-six dollars. Boom. Just enough. Just enough. Yeah, so, just had to get a little bit of fuel. That guy's got the Chevy Avalanche. You barely see those anymore. You know, it was it was a good idea for a truck, but it was mostly what is it? Form over function. It was mostly stylish and everything. But a lot of people didn't like it as a truck. Uh-oh. I see they're uh, bringing in a fuel truck right now. So they're about to do, they're about to do a fuel delivery. Okay. All right, let me let him through. A fuel delivery. Yeah, like the Avalanche, the EXT, they really didn't do very well because it was mostly like, you know, stylish. You know, so most people who needed a truck, they was like, yeah, this is not good as a truck. And uh, those things were really designed for people who just wanted to look like they're driving around in a truck. You know, it's like a lot of people who have trucks, you know, they're driving around in a truck. They don't really need a truck. What they, you know, they'd be better off with a regular car. You know, it's like I was looking at that cyber truck. Some people are saying that this thing is not good as a truck, but, you know, it's all stylish. It's all about style. Like people want to just look cool when they're driving a fucking truck, you know. I've never really been a truck person, but there's certain trucks I do like. But I don't, I don't want to. I wouldn't really want to have to drive one of those every day. See, an SUV the size of this Jeep SRT, I could do that. But trucks, nah, I ain't too crazy about driving trucks. This is not Texas. This is like New York. Man, there's a whole lot of people out here. A lot of traffic. Jesus Christ. A lot of traffic out here. For no good reason. Yeah, so that was about half a tank I put in there. So we good. Couldn't wait to not let me get out, huh? Thanks. Thank you, Subaru. I take back half of the bad things I've said about people who drive Subarus. Uh, Y'all blowing at each other and shit. What the hell's wrong with you in this freaking lime green truck? Pedal van. Yeah, we good. We good. We straight. I try to post at least once a week, but it's getting more and more difficult because to tell you the God's honest truth, there's really not a whole lot going on. First of all, if I want to make a post about the automotive industry, yeah, there's a bit to talk about. Like I could just talk about, you know, Fisker and how Marquise Brownlee was basically able to put the company into bankruptcy with a single review, or I could talk about... Um, you know, how interest rates are making it harder and harder for people to purchase anything like cars or houses, which, you know, I usually do that in my community chat. But the problem is, it's like, I have to be galvanized to make a video. So 
As you also know, I, I posted a little while ago in my community chat, I mentioned the fact today is the last day of the New York International Auto Show. It's April 7th today, and uh, today is the last day to see it. If you see it or if you don't, you're really not missing anything. And I say that because there's no really new exciting products. If you don't have a lot of money... There's definitely nothing that's exciting that you can actually afford to buy. Like, for instance, at that auto show, there were so many no-shows that it really disappointed me. But then again, I'd been disappointed last year. Mercedes didn't show up. Now, never mind the fact Mercedes has all those IQ products and they have a brand new E-Class. Mercedes didn't show up. Uh, BMW didn't show up. They have the iX, they have the i3, the i4, the i5, the i7. They didn't show up. They didn't even, you know, bring their XM. You know, they didn't show up. So basically, Cadillac didn't show up. They have a bunch of brand new electric products. I guess it'll be at next year's show. The Lyric, like my car, the Optic, the Vistic, the Escalade IQ, Cadillac didn't show up. Uh, Lincoln, um, as far as I know, they have a concept electric car, but they didn't show up either. Um, I think it was about 2018 or 2019, Lincoln brought the Lincoln Navigator concept that had uh, go-wing doors, and it was a really cool-looking product. It was huge, it was beautiful, and um, they never ever released the go-wings, but they did release the Navigator, and it, it didn't look exactly like it did on the floor, but it was such a nice product. It was like really interesting just to go there and see it. And it was uh, headline news when anybody was talking about the auto show. This year, the auto show was so boring until Hyundai was basically the talk of everybody simply because they had a bunch of cars that were orange. You couldn't get at them. You couldn't get near them because they were basically uh, roped off. But it was it was just so boring. It was like... You know, what's the point? I, I can understand if you bring concept cars to the New York International Auto Show and you don't let people get in them and you rope them off. I can understand if they're concept cars. But if you have production cars and you bring them to the auto show, those things, people should be able to get into them. But they, they weren't. So there was a bunch of no-shows. I mean, Dodge was a no-show. Now, first of all, they got a 2024 Charger EV coming. Dodge was a no-show. Why? They're going to make these morons wait until 2025 in order to give them the opportunity or the option, I should say, to buy the six-pack model. And they were a no-show. Now, in Detroit, I believe that they have some level of showing where they were showing off both cars. But what's weird about it was the Banshee concept was brought to the auto show, I believe, last year. But they didn't do it this year. So why bring the Banshee concept last year, but not bring it this year when this is the year that you're about to release the production level of the car? doesn't make any sense. Uh, Tesla was a no-show as always. Tesla doesn't show up at all. I guess Tesla figures that their best advertising is done, you know, just using Uber and Lyft. Uh, Lucid did show up. They brought two cars, as you saw in my video, if you saw it. Rivian didn't show up, and Fisker didn't show up. Now, as you know, I posted in my community chat, like I was looking at Fisker's website, they've basically slashed the prices of their cars in half by about like $25,000. Like, you can get a fully loaded Fisker Extreme, but most people won't want to buy one because even though the price is fantastic, the problem is you can't be certain if you'll even be able to get the thing serviced. And I really think that that's really sad that you have to worry about purchasing something because you have no idea if the car manufacturer is going to even be around. And keep in mind that this didn't just happen to electric cars. This has happened... To, this has happened in the past. Like, this happened to DeLorean, for example. You know, DeLorean was a, cr a crackhead, and he's snorting coke and everything, and I, I believe they caught him. And when they caught him, you know, basically the car company itself went under. So it, it sucks that it's not easy 
to replace the parts on these vehicles. It also sucks that it's not easy. Like, like if you have a computer programming issue or if there's a problem with the code, that there may be nothing that you can do and the car could turn into a brick. Like, I've, there's a, a few people who I've seen who've got Fisker Oceans here in Manhattan, and I know that they must be upset to know that they paid full price for this thing only to watch the company damn near seem to go into bankruptcy. And that's part of the reason why I personally, I couldn't see myself right away buying a vehicle from like Rivian, Tesla, Lucid, or Fisker. But I didn't mind buying one from GM Cadillac because I know GM is basically uh, uh, too big to fail in America and the government will bail them out if anything goes wrong with them. We've already seen that. So I wasn't afraid to buy from the big three. But uh, these startups, you know, I have an issue buying from. And now I guess I can stop ranting. That gets me basically to this article right here. Because first of all, before I even start, as far as I'm concerned, what happened to Fisker is really the fault of the federal government. Biden's Inflation Reduction Act was what was giving out all of these tax credits to these companies. So here's the problem. If the government offers $7,500... And that's a tax credit to these EVs in order to get people into electric vehicles. If the government offers that kind of money, then what do you think the car company is going to do? They're just going to raise the price. And when they raise the price, you know, it's going to make their car look more expensive. You know, fewer people are going to want it. But the problem is they're just there to capture that subsidy. In economics, they call it a subsidy capture. Same thing happens on the welfare line. Every now and then you have rich people getting on the bread lines and the soup lines. Now, even the fact that they're rich doesn't stop them from wanting to capture that subsidy. So the government can have all the Thanksgiving turkey lines and and all the free book bag give outs that they do before school. And they can have all the free handouts. Uh, they can hand out this. They can hand out that. But the bottom line is wealthy people are going to see that as an opportunity to save some money. And they're going to go get online, too. The same thing happens with these car companies. If you offer tax credits, they are going to simply raise their prices. And that's the bottom line. And that and that's what happens when government is doing things it's not supposed to be doing with people's money. But why is the government doing this? Why is Joe Biden with this Inflation Reduction Act doing it? And it all goes back to what I've been saying. Nobody can prove me wrong. Nobody can present alternative facts. The simple fact is America lost the war with Russia over Ukraine. And now that we've put sanctions on Russian oil, this government is determined to get us off of fossil fuels as quickly as possible. They've literally openly said, we're coming after your stoves, we're coming after your uh, laundry dryers, we're coming after your water boilers. Uh, in fact, they even said, yeah, we're coming after your air conditioners if they're not uh, electric efficient. If they're not energy efficient enough, we're coming after your air conditioners. Like right now, I'm looking up at my ceiling and I'm, I'm looking at my ceiling fan and thinking to myself, you know what? Someday they might come after my goddamn ceiling fan because that's the problem with any bully. A bully doesn't just take your lunch money for one day and just stop. No, 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 no. A bully keeps coming. Every single day of the week, you're going to be giving up that lunch money. A bully doesn't just stop. And that's the simple fact. So when I see these people, they're like, oh, yeah, if Dodge doesn't make V8, then I'm going to go to Mustang. I'm like, well, here's a question. How long do you think it'll be before Mustang loses their ability to make V8s? Huh? Well, first of all, Ford already turned the Mustang into an electric vehicle with no engine at all. How long do you think it'll be before Corvette is making nothing but E-rays without V8s? I, I give them 10 years. Maybe 15 tops. I, I give them about one more model before the government steps in and say, yeah, guess what? You ain't allowed to make no V8s no more. Now, some people are like, oh, that can't happen. Well, I'm like, okay, if you think it can't happen, I want you to take a look at what we've got right now and tell me it can't happen. First of all, for all of you people, oh, yeah, the manual's the best thing in the world. I love driving the manual. Manual's the best thing. It's like you got to have skill to drive a manual. Yeah, well, how many cars got manuals now? Right. And then 
you take a look at these engines, they forced everything to have these shitty twin turbos and turbochargers, these shit turbos. So they've made everything forced induction because of their mandates on emissions and this, that, and other, and fuel efficiency. How long do you really think it'll be before they come after the very few manufacturers who still have V8 engines? How long do you think it'll be? I'm telling you it's going to be less than 10 years. Maybe less than 15 tops. And, and, oh, yeah, everybody celebrate. The government pumped the brakes on EVs. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. They're still selling the same shit. They're not, they're not the, what is it? This government has no reverse gears. They're not going back. They're going forward. They're going to build more charging stations. They're going to push EV more and more. And that's what it is. And they're not, there's no reverse gear. There's no reverse gear. They're not going back. I guarantee it. But um, what does it say right here? This is USA Today. It says, if you like your car, good luck keeping it. Biden's EV mandate drives changes people don't want. Uh, it says, in 2013, Barack Obama earned himself the lie of the year after he had repeatedly assured Americans, if you like your health care plan, you can keep it. That simply wasn't true. And the rollout of Obamacare, Affordable Care Act, caused millions of people to receive cancellation notices. The government's intrusion into the private health insurance market had major consequences and many Americans weren't happy about it. More than 10 years later, President Joe Biden is driving major disruptions in another major U.S. industry, automobiles. And before I continue, let me just remind you, you remember that cash for clunkers bullshit? Cash for clunkers was yet another subsidy capture opportunity. And, and people wonder, oh, well, why is it that every hundred days we're going a trillion dollars more into debt? Yeah, well, this has a lot to do with it. So anyway, unlike his former boss, Biden's not even bothering to promise the American people that if they like their car, they can keep it. Biden, however, also is not being upfront with the public about what his new Environmental Protection Agency rule actually means. The headline announcing the EPA mandate last month proclaims Biden-Harris administration finalized strongest ever pollution standards for cars that position U.S. companies and workers to lead the clean vehicle future, protect public health, address the climate crisis, save drivers money. Uh, as with the most bureaucratic mumbo-jumbo, the meaning is less than clear. It'll, I'll translate. If you like your current gas-powered car, SUV, or truck, too bad. What people want doesn't play into Biden's rules. The timing of this rule isn't a coincidence. It allows Biden to claim a win on his promises to the climate change crowd months ahead of the presidential election. And Biden needs all the help he can get. Yet the broader implications, if drivers fully understood them, aren't likely to win the president a lot of fans. Um, the final rule which begins in earnest in 2027, demands that automakers quickly amp up production of electric vehicles. By 2032, the emission standards dictate that roughly 70% of new vehicle sales will be battery-powered electric or hybrids. For comparison, EVs make up just another 8% of new car sales last year. If automakers don't fall in line, they risk hefty fines. While the EPA doesn't specifically call for EVs, the only way automakers could reach the new targets is with a major uptick in that technology. It's worth noting, too, that a switch to electric batteries is not a panacea for the climate. Mining and processing those materials take a toll, something Biden ignores. There's a huge amount of electric uh, I'm sorry, environmental impact of mining the lithium and copper and all the materials that go into it. Uh, Manhattan Institute and a former editor of Popular Mechanics told me, so by the time that battery gets to your car, it's already responsible for a huge amount of carbon emissions. This mandate also comes to an at an awkward moment. People in the car market are not flocking to EVs and sales are not meeting expectations. Now, first of all, that right there is one of those weasel terms because when they say that they're not flocking to it, first of all, people aren't buying shit right now. If you try to buy any car, even if you have excellent credit, if you have an 850 credit score like I do, you're still looking at an 8% interest rate. I went to Mercedes when I got tired of waiting for my electric uh, Cadillac. I went to Mercedes and I was looking at that S-Class, all right? 
And I was like, you know what? What if I buy one of these instead? And I was looking specifically at the S500 because I don't want a gas guzzler. I didn't want a gas guzzler. The EQS I didn't like because it's too small. So I was like, you know what? What if I buy this instead? So Mercedes is up there telling me, yeah, the lowest interest rate you can get, the lowest lease interest rate we're doing is fucking 10%. And I was like, wait a minute, but I have an 850 credit score. And they were like, yeah, well, it doesn't really matter because the lowest interest rate. And I'm like, this is fucked up. So the bottom line is, yeah, there are people out there who have cash savings and there's people out there who want to buy vehicles up front. Like, I'm not one of them. And, and let me tell you this. I, I met a guy in my last video, and I was talking to him, and he, you know, some of these older dudes, these old heads, they buy their cars cash, right? I don't do that. And let me tell you another thing. After I saw what just happened to Fisker, I'm pretty sure at this point I'm never going to finance another car. I'm pretty sure about it. My electric Cadillac, for example, that car is great. I love the car and everything, but... Within the next three years, all of that technology is going to be obsolete. There'll be new shit out. I'm not going to want to keep a six-year-old electric car. I'm just not going to want And I don't, I'm not worried about the battery because the battery is warranted for like eight years, 100,000 miles by, by government mandate. I'm not worried about that. I'm like, I want the newest technology I can get. I want the newest, best technology, the fastest computers, blah, blah, blah. I'm not financing another one of these cars. It's like even right now with my Jeep SRT. That Jeep SRT has been paid off. And now, yeah, I've got it. But the problem is it's a very expensive, very high maintenance. Um, how should I say? To some extent, it's more of a liability. Even though it's paid off, it's more of a liability. Because the problem is you can't just let it sit still. You have to drive it. And if you have to drive it, that means you're still going to wear down parts and you're still going to have to replace stuff on it. So the thing about it is, I, I really don't know. I, I like having both of those cars. I like having two cars at a time. But the only thing about it is, it's like, you can't just let it sit there. It's not like it's something you pay for and you don't care about the money. I got to drive that fucking thing. I can't just let it sit there. I have to get oil changes. I got to... Got to get the inspection sticker. I got to get the registration sticker and all this. So the only thing I'm saying is it's like, you know, when you finance something and or if you buy it outright, now it's yours. Now, how do you think those people who bought Fiskars feel that they paid for their car? You know how everybody walk around boasting, yeah, I bought my car cash. Here's a question. Let's say you bought a Fisker Ocean cash. How do you feel right now knowing you lost half your money? Like half of your money was just burned away, just disappeared. Because of one YouTube review, half of your money disappeared. Half of your money disappeared. It's like a divorce. It's like half your money just disappeared into thin air. You know, no. From now on, I believe that I'm going to lease. Um, when the lease is over, you'll take this back. I'll get something new. Maybe I'll stick with you as a company. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll go, man, shit, who knows? Maybe uh, somebody else will sell something I like. I don't know. But three years is a long time, and they have a lot of new products coming to market. So as far as our people really cutting back off of EVs, if you look at the data, most of these companies, about 10 to 15% of the cars that they sold, and, and, I, and I, by the way, I don't like going by quarters because some quarters are stronger than others. I Like, I'll look at your sales over the year. I don't really care about the quarters. But the way the stock market works, the stock market pays a close attention to quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. Um, Tesla sells 100% electric vehicles. Most of these other car manufacturers, they don't even have that many models. So for them, you know, 10% sales were electric vehicles. That's actually big news. 15% uh, sales were electric vehicles. That's very big news, you know. So for them, it's a little bit different. For Tesla, not hitting your target, you know, if, if, if you said you were going to sell 400,000, but you only sold 300,000, you know, I'm not looking at that as if it's a bad thing. I mean, you still sold 300,000 cars. So if you're just going to say, oh, yeah, well, January, February, March, 
you didn't do that well. I mean, that doesn't tell you the whole story. As we inch closer and closer to summer and gas prices rise because of war in the Middle East, which never seems to end, EV prices are going to slowly drop and EV sales are going to go up. And as EV sales go up, EV prices may start to rise again because of the uh, supply and demand dynamic. But time will tell because we really don't know what's going to happen between now and the election. So we'll have to see. But to tell you the truth, people, it's not that people don't want EVs. It's just that the EV that they want, they can't get. Or the price is so high on most of the stuff in general that they just can't, you know, they just can't walk out there and buy it. A lot of these people have fucked up credit. You know, I'm not one of them, but uh, a lot of these people do have fucked up credit. You know, 600, 700. It's like, yeah, you can still buy a car. It's just that you're going to have to put like twenty or $30,000 down. And most people may not have that. So anyway, it says consumer interest in EVs has declined for four consecutive months. And the public remains concerned about a lack of charging infrastructure. The price and confusing tax credits. The tax credits aren't confusing. If you go in, you buy the car. When you get your tax return next year and you show your CPA the receipt, you will get a credit back on your taxes for buying that electric car. It ain't that complicated. And what I've also noticed is a lot of the manufacturers have turned that tax credit into instant cash as of January 1st. So whatever the price of the car was, they just take $7,500 off of that retail price. But um, let's see, it says even comparatively popular Teslas are in a slump. Negative headlines don't help either. When drivers in Chicago couldn't keep their EV batteries charged during a deep freeze earlier this year, it didn't instill confidence for those of us who live and drive in the Midwest. Now, you're talking about the Midwest. I live in the Northeast. Um, Electric vehicle charging is not very very difficult here. Furthermore, if you have a house and you have your own private charger, you have like no issue whatsoever. All you got to do is just drive the car. But, um, you know, not everybody has it that way. I totally understand. It says expect Trump to hammer Biden on the EV mandate. It says because we're in a presidential campaign, expect to hear former President Donald Trump harp on potential consequences of Biden's EPA rule. In fact, Trump has vowed to overturn it. Joe Biden's extreme electric vehicle mandate will force Americans to buy ultra expensive cars they do not want and cannot. Oh, wait, I'm supposed to read this like Trump. Hold on. Hold on. (coughs) Let me uh, get out the Trump figure. Joe Biden's extreme electric vehicle mandate will force Americans to buy ultra expensive cars that they don't want and can't afford while destroying the U.S. auto industry in the process. Okay, that's a little bit better. This radical policy is anti-jobs, anti-consumer, and anti-American. I have to agree with Trump on this one. However, automakers are already gearing up to meet the stricter demands, the stricter standards, spending billions in the process. Constantly retooling to meet government-imposed targets presents its own challenges to the industry. It says, uh, no question the impact on car companies will be huge, but what bothers me most about this regulation is that Biden, through regulatory decree, is trying to force a dramatic change that most Americans don't fully understand yet and very well may not want. Rather than go through Congress, where a robust public debate could take place, Biden quietly did it through the rulemaking process. It's politically deceptive in a way that is all too typical of the Biden administration in a lot of different areas, says Megs Megs of the Manhattan Institute. They have opted to make policy changes out of sight of the average voter. If Biden doesn't want us to keep our beloved gas-powered cars, then he should just say so. The American people deserve to know what a what the what a future with Biden at the wheel really looks like. Now, here's the thing though. Like I think I'm mature enough to understand that there's a lot bigger of picture here. Now, first of all, one of the things that you'll never hear on the news is what I've been saying and I'm going to keep saying it and keep saying it and keep saying it. The reason why this is happening is because of America's own foreign policy. We have alienated and made war 
with just about every single OPEC nation at one point or another. Venezuela is like less than like 7,000 miles away from us. If we really wanted cheaper oil or cheaper energy, we'd be making friendly with Venezuela. If we really wanted it, we don't. Now, a lot of you people are wondering, oh, why do these illegal aliens keep on coming here? Well, what you need to do is take a look at America's foreign policies that have literally destroyed and ruined their economies. There is no reason to have sanctions on Venezuela. There is no reason to still have sanctions on Cuba. There is no reason whatsoever to be doing that. Why are we doing it? Because by making their oil worthless, we make Saudi oil worth more money. And I don't give a fuck if you agree or not. I could care less because it's the truth. So we're determined to keep buying Saudi oil and Canadian oil, right? Meanwhile, we're starving the Venezuelans and making it so that they got to sell themselves just to get a ham sandwich for dinner. That's how bad it is down there. Like they they literally now I want you to think about this especially if you're a passport bro. They got to sell themselves just to eat because we've made it so that their most precious, valuable and their 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 best resource they got oil. They can't even sell it on the market. They can't even sell it cuz of our sanctions. America tried that sanction game with Russia, but it totally backfired. Because, you know, they used to make fun of Russia all the time. They were like, yeah, Russia's nothing more than a, than a gas station with nuclear weapons. Well, guess what? Those nuclear weapons are what keeps you at bay. See, it's not so easy to threaten another country when they've got nuclear weapons pointed at you. Like, dude, I don't know if you saw that movie Red October. That shit is real. They've got submarines, just like we do, nuclear submarines that could, what, what is the word? Shower! Nuclear missiles all over your goddamn country. Now, as long as they have those nuclear weapons, we can't simply bully them. So what do we do? We just throw some sanctions out. Oh, yeah, well, we're going to make it so that nobody can buy your oil. That's what we're going to do. We're going to make it so nobody can buy your oil. How's that working out? Russia's economy, you remember when Biden said he was going to turn the ruble into rubble? That was his exact words. How's that working out? Putin just got reelected. All of his uh, competition, all of his opponents, they went out of windows. It had nothing to do with Putin, but they just somehow found themselves defenestrated. Um, their economy is still doing fine. Uh, what else? Um, China's economy is kind of screwed up right now, but I'm pretty sure they'll rebound within the next 10 years. It probably won't even take them that long. It'll probably take them four or five years. They're, they're having some issues. But then again, China always had issues because, like, what was it? Like, their population of poverty still numbers, like, 300 million or something like that. But they have, like, 1.4 billion people in total or something. But the bottom line is they'll be fine eventually. Our sanctions don't hurt them. China controls all of Asia and Southeast Asia. And nobody want to say that, but the reality is that's what it is. If you go to any of the Asian countries, now keep in mind, I'm about to go to Bali and Singapore. And you go to any of these Asian countries and you can feel the Chinese influence. You can see made in China on everything. You can see Chinese people coming to those people's countries shopping. Every single one of those countries I went to, I went to South Korea. I went to the Philippines. I went to Thailand. All of those people had the exact same thing to say. Why are there so many Chinese people here? Even those people are saying it. They're like, wait a minute, where are all these Chinese people coming from? And it dawned upon me, I was like, wait a minute, you know, China is basically running this whole place. It's just like America in the Western Hemisphere. You know, when Americans go someplace, you know, they know we're coming with pockets full of money. So everybody makes way for the Americans. Well, in those countries over there, they make way for the Chinese. Because in Chinese, they got money. They got, I mean, they got money because they own your whole fucking block. They own, the, they own all the Chinese restaurants, obviously. They even own most of the Japanese restaurants. Because when you go into these Japanese restaurants, you get sushi. Ask these people where they're from. I'm guaranteed they're going to tell you they're from China. <laughs> you know? <coughs> so that's just the reality. Our sanctions, our sanctions are what has brought us to this point. I don't really believe 
that this is Biden himself doing this. I don't believe it. When you talk about, oh, yeah, why don't we go through Congress and the rulemaking process? To tell you the truth, I really think Congress and the automakers, the lobbyists for these automakers, I really believe that this is more them than it is the presidency. If you really think about it, what were the EPA regulations like before Biden? They've been planning this for a long time. Uh, Obama was doing the same thing. Uh, if you go back before Obama, you had Clinton doing the exact same thing. And if you really think about it, most of these auto manufacturers, all they're focused on is profit. What could be more profitable than selling electric vehicles and offering subscription-based services to use portions of the car that are already installed in the car. What could be more profitable than that? It's just like with my electric Cadillac. I have self-driving for three years. That three years is roughly the time that I have that car for its lease. When that lease is over, that subscription ends, and it's, you know the freeness is over. That's why, as far as I'm concerned, that thing's going back. I refuse to pay you for a feature that's already built into my car. I'm not paying for it. Um, you know, Sirius XM radio, I don't need to pay you for that shit either. But bottom line is, it's like they're looking for profit. And Tesla has basically showed them you don't need dealerships. You don't even need dedicated salespeople. All you really, you can have a cell phone app and a delivery center, and you can deliver these cars right to these people, and you don't even need a salesman, you don't need a finance manager, you don't need a, a store manager. You, the problem, however, that they face is the fact that their service centers are far and few between. So they either have to open more and more service centers See, that's how the dealerships do it. The dealerships service the car at the dealership. So that, that is one of their issues. But the bottom line is Tesla showed them, yeah, we can make more profit and we have less debt. And now a lot of these other companies, they want to move towards that model. The problem is if you're not careful, you can end up just like Fisker. You can end up giving your money to somebody who's uh, contract building your cars for you, but you don't have enough of a public relationship to save yourself when some YouTuber says your car ain't shit and then all of a sudden you end up on the chopping block. You end up uh, facing Chapter 11 bankruptcy. You know, it's crazy. It's really crazy, but that's just what the, the game is. The game is messed up, guys. The game is the game is afoot. It's messed up. So the bottom line is this. It's like, yeah, I don't think Biden's going to... This is him in a Hummer, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, I don't think Biden's going to uh, win this year. This man is too old. This man needs to retire. That's what we have the 25th Amendment for in the first place. Um, but the uh, the left and the Democrats have put themselves between a rock and a hard place. I foresee that things are going to get worse. We have like, what, 212 days up until the election, I believe. I think things are going to get worse. I think there's going to be issues with the economy. Um I think energy prices are going to go higher. Inflation may come back with a vengeance, but only time will tell. So, you know, there's not a long time that we got to wait to see, but I, I think that's what, I honestly think that's what's going to happen. Um, so that's the reality. But um, I know, you know, you're going to make your comments and you're going to say what you think about this story. I'll leave the link to this story, but I've already basically read it for you. So if you want to go back, read it yourself. It's, it's really nothing new. But um, I think that's just what it is. I, I've been saying it for years. I said, yeah, electric vehicles are coming. Now, people wanted to point to Colorado and people wanted to point to uh, Detroit. And they wanted to point to, what was it, uh, Canada. And, oh, yeah, well, when it's cold, you can't charge your car. And, and there's a long line and all this. It's like those things are not enough to stop the government from doing what they're doing. These people, oh yeah, hydrogen's the future. No, it's not. Hydrogen might be the future for airliners, uh, maybe even cruise ships, but they're never going to make a hydrogen infrastructure for mass 
production electric cars, or, or, or I should say mass production cars on the American market. It's not going to happen. Their own emissions mandates won't allow that because when you burn hydrogen, you create nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide, if you don't know it, is a greenhouse gas. They're not going to let that happen. They're not going to let that happen. What they want ultimately is they want to control the point of emissions. See, they can burn coal in a power plant, and then they can use the pipes and force the uh, emissions underground, and they can, they call that carbon sequestration. But what they don't want is you rolling around creating the emissions. That's what they, they want to control the point of emissions. That's what they're doing. So the way I see it, it's like they're going to keep pushing in this direction. Yeah, they, it may be a little slow down for now, but they're building more charging stations. And once they get that infrastructure where they want it, once they get more charging stations, I'll say, I'll say like once there's about 200,000 charging stations, and that, that's a big number because I think right now the charging station number is like lower than like 90,000. But once they have like 200 to 250 charging stations all throughout America, you ain't going to have no excuse. And once you have no excuse, you already know how the government does it. You already know. They're going to make it more expensive for you to have a gas-powered vehicle. They may tax you out of it entirely. They may prohibit it entirely. Look at what they're doing in New York. They literally say, yeah, we're going to build buildings with no gas lines. My house doesn't have a gas line. The house that I'm in right now, everything in my house is electric. Everything. My stove, my dryer, my uh, washing machine, my, uh, the only thing that's not electric is my furnace because that's oil. And you know, the next thing that they should have coming if they don't already have it coming is an electric furnace. And once they have an uh, electric furnace, oh, you already know, man. It, it's coming. You're Basically, I'm going to be paying like one bill per month, and it's just going to be the electric bill. And that's it. It's like I used to have to pay Con Edison, Keyspan for oil. Uh, what was it? Natural gas. I used to have to pay uh, Verizon and shit. So now I'm going to have like one bill. It's going to be Con Edison. Well, you know, it's going to be Con Edison electric bill, basically. I don't I don't know if you have the same companies. You probably don't because uh, you might be in a different state. But bottom line is that's what they're doing. And they're making it so obvious. They've pat, they've literally passed laws to say this is what we're going to do. Uh, and that's it. There's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> this is what they've this is what they've done. This is what they've done. And they and I think this war in Ukraine with Russia has put everything in overdrive so that now, I mean, what else? Think about it like this. These are the same people. These are the same people. It took them how long to, to, to get water in Flint, Michigan that doesn't have lead in it? These are the same people. Oh, we don't have money for, oh my God, it's going to cost trillions of dollars. We can't do it. These are the same people handing money to Israel. These are the same money, hand, they're handing money to Ukraine, handing money to Israel, and then they're giving you a $7,500 tax credit per car. But yet we've got states and cities where the water has led. Oh, no, we can't replace them pipes. It's going to cost trillions. We don't got it. These are the same people who had Lockheed Martin money for an F-35 that crashes like nine times out of ten. We, we've got pictures of the shit. we got video on YouTube. The F-35 trying to take off. That thing is spinning around on the ground and blows up. What are you kidding? Crashing into the... When they try to land it on the naval carriers, crashing into the water. How many times has that happened? Like twice? Trillion dollar program. Oh, no, no, we can't do it. We ain't got the money. We don't got it. Really? Really? You don't got the money? These are the same people after that bridge got hit by the boat. Oh, well, I, I don't know if the government should intervene. I mean, the government's going to intervene. What money are they going to use? And, uh, what? Really? So you're telling me we're handing money to Israel, we're handing money to Ukraine, but... 
we can't fix our pipes. And you're telling me that we don't have enough money to fix a bridge. Really? But we have enough money to hand people $7,500 as long as they go out and promise to buy an electric car. Is that what you're telling me? Is that what you're telling me? Really? So you already see this. You already see what the game is. This is bull. It's all bullshit. It really is. It's all. I wish I was president because I'd set this country's priorities in order. But, uh, you know, that's probably never going to happen. So all I can do is I can hope for somebody who could just do a little bit better than this demented old senile man. So we'll see what happens. But th that's the story. So you, you tell me what you think. You know, I don't really get very much criticism. Most of them just disappeared. So uh, it is what it is.